This is an overview of the retro bulbar and the peri bulbar blocks. These are two regional anesthetic techniques that are used for ophthalmology procedures. The pros and cons of these procedures are listed here on the right, and they both allow you to have some level of akinesis and anesthesia to the eye. The retro bulbar block is shown in this green arrow here, and it goes behind the eye. The peri bulbar blocks are shown in the blue arrows, and they go above and below the eye. Let's discuss the pros and cons of each. The retro bulbar block deposits local anesthetic within this muscular cone directly behind the globe. Because it goes behind the globe and in the path of all these nerves, it allows you to block the ciliary nerves, the ciliary ganglion, and the cranial nerves 2, 3, and 6. Also because it goes in this muscular cone behind the eye, it allows you to use less local anesthetic. 2 to 3 cc's compared to the larger volume of 6 to 8 cc's required in the peribulbar block. The retrobulbar block requires a higher level of monitoring because it has a higher risk of complications. These complications are listed here. The first is penetration of the globe, so penetration of the eye itself. The next is intraductal injection, which then causes retrograde flow of the local anesthetic along the optic sheath into the subarachnoid space, which can cause uptundation and respiratory arrest. This can also cause intravascular injection, which is usually negligible when you have intravascular injection into veins, but if you happen to inject this small volume of local anesthetic into the arteries, it can cause a neurotoxicity. Luckily, that neurotoxicity is rapidly self-limited. So it'll start very quickly, but it'll also end relatively quickly. But intravascular injection is still a possible side effect. The last possible side effect is retrobulbar hematoma and hemorrhage. This can cause a marked proptosis in the eye, and it might require lateral canthotomy to relieve the pressure behind the eye. The peribulbar block, on the other hand, has a lower risk of these complications. The peribulbar block does not enter this muscle cone, and instead it goes above or below the eye without entering this muscle cone. It doesn't target the origins of the cranial nerves themselves, and because of that, it requires a larger volume of local anesthetic. We said two to three times that of the retrobulbar block. It also has a longer time of onset because you're injecting in the vicinity of the nerves, not within the nerves themselves, and it also has a lower incidence of complete akinesia, so you might not have perfect eye paralysis after a peribulbar block. But again, the upside of the peribulbar block is that it has a lower risk of intravascular injection, intradural injection, and retrobulbar hematoma. I hope this review was helpful, and thank you for listening.